I just want to quickly go over these different types of ventilators because I think it will improve your quality of life when you go to use a different type of ventilator that you're not quite familiar with. Just recognizing that there are uh, subtle differences in how these machines will behave. So we'll start with the bellow assembly here. So this is your bellow and it will compress to force air gas out to the patient. Machines with this bellow assembly, you'll see them on the side um, and they have this collapsible bellow. This collapses because there is a supply of highly pressurized oxygen that enters into this rigid chamber. To squeeze down on this. So this is pressurized oxygen in here and that delivers the breath to the patient and then you'll see these bellows re-expanding when the patient exhales. So we'll have air coming back and filling these bellows up. Obviously this pressurized air will need to leave this rigid chamber to allow these bellows to re-expand. So this air will leave. This is a spill valve or a pressure release valve. And then this gas will be uh, disposed of at the scavenger. So this ventilator is pneumatically driven from O2 from the wall source, ideally. If your wall oxygen failed, actually this would be driven by your backup O2 canister. And just think about how much extra gas this is burning through because every time you deliver a breath to the patient, you have to repressurize this rigid enclosure um, and then you have to waste that gas. So that would be burning through quite a lot of your backup oxygen supply if you for some reason had an O2 wall failure. Let's draw this vent in our circle system. So remember this is our fresh gas flow, um, our inspiratory unidirectional valve, and this will be our patient expiratory valve. This is our APL and our bag and our CO2 absorber. So those are our seven components. I guess this is the Y piece of the circle system. The vent on this system is going to be over here. So we'll draw the bellow ventilator. And there's actually gonna be a physical switch between these for you to choose whether you're on manual spontaneous for using your bag or the vent mode. When you switch to the ventilator mode, your APL valve and your bag are totally disengaged from the circuit. So you could squeeze this bag um, and essentially nothing would happen. One nice thing about the bellow vent is that you get this nice visual feedback about how much air is in your circuit uh, when the vent is active. So just like you can look at your bag, when you're on manual spontaneous mode to see if your circuit is full of air. Uh, when you're on the vent mode, if these bellows are re-expanding completely and going to the top, that means there must be sufficient air in the circuit to re-expand these bellows. On the other hand, if they're only making it partially up um, in this rigid chamber, or maybe they're just flopping around at the bottom here, that means you have a leak in your circuit. You need to figure out where that's coming from and uh, temporarily turn up your fresh gas flow to compensate for that. 